Hey, 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 everybody. It is yours truly, Dr. Shamika Dean. Come on in. This is day two of the seven day YouTube live challenge. And I am so excited about uh, today's topic. I'm excited about every topic, but this is one of my favorites that we're going to talk about today because it is about setting boundaries in business. So as you are tuning in, make sure you click the little arrow at the bottom of your screen and I want you to hit share. And when you hit share, I want you to write the caption, boundaries are beneficial. So type that in, in your caption and share this video really quickly. When you are done, let me know that you have shared and I am going to welcome the rest of you in while you're here. Hey, Accountant's Corner, thank you. Hey, Don Renee, how are you? So yeah, come on in, come on in, come on in. Uh, like I said, I always wish I could like just play music, right? Um, <laughs> on these lives, but YouTube is not about that sharing other people's music life. Like they'll shut your stuff down and ain't nobody got time for that. Okay. So uh, again, yeah, come on in, make sure that you share comment so that I'll know you here. Otherwise I can't see you and I can't shout you out. And I love to engage with my audience. So um, once you're done sharing again, share it and type boundaries are beneficial and then let me know that you have done that. And we are going to go ahead and move forward with our training tonight. Let me know if I'm good, if you can hear me, if I'm clear, because I can't see what you all see. Um, everything will always look good on my end unless someone alerts me that something is a little bit off. OK. Thank you for the thumbs up already. Someone is already showing love. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Okay, looks like I am good on my end. So uh, again, today we are talking about boundaries in business. And I think it is a great topic. Someone actually asked me about this topic uh, as a transitioning entrepreneur. You know, how do you set boundaries in business? Um, so show of hands, how many of you or um, have had a problem saying no, like, you you know, you don't know how to say no to people. So you find yourself, hey, Bianca. So you find yourself drained. You find yourself constantly pouring and pouring and pouring because you just can't seem to say no to people, even when you don't have the capacity uh, to, to give them what they are asking you for, right? Or you feel like, you are going to risk losing relationships or losing friends because you say no. Uh, one of the things I heard someone say is if you really want to know where you stand with people, tell them no, right? Because the reality is the, the, um, the truth about where your relationship stands with people is when you begin to say no, when you're no longer doing what they want you to do or what pleases them or what makes them comfortable and you decide to stand in the power of no, you really find out like who's really rocking with you. Right. And so, uh, um, again, we're going to, you know, to talk about that because as I opened up with boundaries are beneficial. All right. They have benefits. OK, they boundaries are a bonus. Y'all know I'm always coming with the alliteration. So, again, boundaries are benefits. They are a bonus and they are beneficial. OK, and so that's why we're going to talk about that, because I understand, you know, how it can be a struggle to say no to people, especially when you are a giver, when you love helping people and you love seeing other people win. You know, it can be a struggle to just simply say no to people, especially people that you love and care about and people when you value the relationship that you have. But if a relationship is not built on the reality and the truth about how you feel, then the relationship is fickle anyway. And um, and fabricated friendships falter fast. Boom. OK, so there there is uh, number one fabricated friendships falter fast. And so, um, again, 
That's why you have to make sure that number one, when it comes to setting boundaries, that you are honest with yourself, okay? That you are honest about what brings you peace, what brings you joy, what you're willing to commit without robbing yourself and putting yourself in a place of misery. You have to be honest about you know, what you want to give in a relationship, whether it's a business relationship or a personal relationship, whether it's with family, whether it's with friends, whether it's with clients, you have to be honest with yourself about how much you are willing to give. That's not going to drain you. That's not going to rob you of your peace and your sanity. You have to make that decision. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about again about, you know, the difference between a, being a doorbell and a doormat. OK, because they are different. So the doorbell, when someone rings your doorbell, that means that you have to give them access. You have to give them permission to come on the other side. That means mm -hmm. that you are giving them permission to have access to you. And as a business owner, you have the right and you have the authority and you have the ability to make that decision. Again, to be a doorbell versus a doormat. See, in a doormat, people just walk all over you. They don't care about stepping on you. They don't care about how it makes them feel. Think about this. When you walk onto a porch and there is a, a doormat there, do you stop and think about, oh my God, I don't want to get this doormat dirty. No, absolutely not. You simply walk right over that doormat and keep on doing what everybody else is doing. Why? Because people have permission to just keep walking on, trampling on, leaving their dirt right? And all of the drama on the doormat. But the doorbell, they have to stop and they have to ring the doorbell and they have to be given permission to have access to you, right? And so if someone comes to ring your doorbell and you don't want to let them in, you can keep the door closed. You can keep the door locked. So again, I want you to understand that you literally have the power and the authority to make a decision about whether you're going to be a doorbell or where you, whether you're going to be a doormat. So someone type, I want everyone to type in the comments, I am a doorbell, okay? Not a ding bell, <laughs> but a doorbell. I am a doorbell because again, you know, you, you make that decision. No one else can treat you any way other than what you allow them to treat you. We teach people how to treat us. All right. And so in teaching people how to treat us is not so much about how um, we treat them or how we allow them to treat us is it first and foremost starts with how we treat ourselves. Okay. So if I treat myself like a doormat and I don't take, um, you know, care of myself and I don't set any boundaries for myself, then guess what? I am showing other people how they have permission to treat me as well. And so again, before you can set any boundaries with others, you have to set boundaries with yourself first. OK, so how do you set those boundaries? Right. So we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of this thing. I don't plan on being on here long. If you have questions, make sure that you comment those in the comment section and I am going to respond to you. OK, so I see more of you tuning in. Hello, hello, hello. Make sure again that you comment, because if you don't, I can't I won't know that you're here and I won't be able to acknowledge you. And I would love to say hello to you. And also, I would love for you to share this video and invite others to join us. OK. All right. So um, when I was working at a prison, yes, I worked at a prison for three and a half years. I was a security guard at an all male facility. Yeah. Y'all see that? Yeah. <laughs> My son's looking at me out the corner of his eye. But the way that I learned to set boundaries was actually when I worked for uh, works at a prison and at the prison. If, if you know anything about how uh, a prison is set up, the inmates have direct, you know, you are available to them pretty much the entire time that you are at work. And one of the very first things that they taught us when we came into the door, the very first thing, and it's the thing that I remembered, it's the thing that changed my life, it's the thing that helped me set boundaries. The very first thing they told us is that if you want respect from the inmates, then you have to be firm, be fair, and be consistent. Those That is literally what taught me how to set boundaries, okay? So again, be firm, be fair, and be consistent. Now, 
Here's the thing. Some of us are afraid of being firm because we deal with rejection. If you fear rejection, then it would be very difficult for you to be firm because you seek to be accepted. You seek for people to accept you, to approve you, to give you accolades, to affirm you. And so if you struggle with rejection in the natural, in the spiritual outside in your regular relationships, then you will struggle with that in your business because business success is 80% personal development. And that's why I tell people, you are not going to show up any differently in your business than you do in your personal life. So if you deal with rejection, then first you got to start there. You have to ask um, you know, God to, to heal you from the fear of rejection first and foremost. Okay. That can, this topic can go real deep. So I'm not going to go deep on that, but I wanted to highlight that part. Um, but again, so it's hard to be firm if you deal with rejection. So if you're dealing with rejection, then you need to address that first. Okay. Uh, being fair again and being consistent. So one thing about, um, being fair is that, you know, it may not be fair to everybody, but it's fair for you. Okay. And I believe that, that that's one of the things that you could struggle with is if you feel like, well, I got to be fair. I got to do it for everybody, you know? And the reality is you have to be fair to yourself first. And then you set the standard on how you're going to move and be fair dealing with other people. And then the next thing is being consistent. Okay. So, um, I tell, this is a strategy that I'm going to give you all, uh, for setting boundaries. And this is going to be your step-by-step -step strategy. Okay. So first of all, be apologizing, let your no mean no. And your yes mean yes. No is a complete sentence and it doesn't deserve an act, an explanation. So what that means is when you say no to someone, you don't have to explain why you're saying no, because that is the decision and the power of your, your, uh, ability to make a decision that benefits you. Because you're only as good to others as you are to yourself first. So you have to be direct and don't spend time apologizing, going backwards and forwards to people about, well, why did you say no? I said no because I said no. These are the boundaries that I have set for myself and, you know, allow that to be that. Now, if you want to, to elaborate, that's your choice. But I can tell you this, once you start elaborating, you will continue to have to explain yourself. Right. And before you know it, if you already deal with being unable to be firm because you deal with rejection before, you know, it, you will allow yourself to you will talk yourself out of your no. OK, so be direct. Don't go around the corners. You know, don't be vague. Don't um, <laughs> when when I ask a person a question and I and there's a direct answer, I literally only want a direct answer. Like if I say, are you going? And you're like, well, um, I was kind of saying, you know, that I just wanted to really like stay here because I wanted to watch my TV show and I didn't ask you for all of that. Right. Being direct means just clear, concrete, straight to the point. So if I say, are you going? The answer is no. OK, boom, you're not going. All right. So be direct. The next thing is to be descriptive. Now, when I say be descriptive, I mean, be clear about how, uh, what your boundaries are. Okay. So don't say, well, yeah, you can call me anytime. And the reality is you really don't want to talk to people after nine o'clock PM. Right. So you need to be as clear about your boundaries so that people will know how to abide by the boundaries that you have set. So I have boundaries where I say, hey, don't call me before 9 a.m. and don't call me after, you know, 9 p.m. And if if those boundaries are not clear and I have told people, yeah, just give me a call. Right. Just give me a call. And then they call me at eight o'clock in the morning and then I'm frustrated and upset because my phone is ringing before eight o'clock. Or my phone is ringing at 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. at night, but I haven't been descriptive. I haven't been giving them a clear path to uphold the boundaries that you have set. So be clear, be specific about what your boundaries are. OK, now here's the thing about boundaries. Respect and boundaries goes both ways. So when you are going to ask people which 
is the next part. Uh, the next part of setting boundaries is discipline. And so that means respecting your boundaries by being consistent and then respecting the boundaries of others. You cannot expect for others to do for you what you are not doing for them. You cannot respect for, uh, expect for others to treat you any differently than you are treating yourself. So that's where that discipline comes in. That means that when you set those boundaries, be consistent in those boundaries, okay? Make sure that you are implementing them. So we talked about firm, fair, and consistent. So make sure that when you implement those boundaries, you're implementing those boundaries for everyone. It's, it's across the board, right? So my family, I tell them, look, don't call me before 9 a.m. or after 9 p.m. unless it's an emergency. If it's not life or death, don't call me because I do not want to be up on the phone all night. And I don't like to talk to people that early in the morning because I know that I need time to get myself together once I get out of bed. And if I know that it takes me a while to get my attitude together, get my emotions in check and all of that stuff. And then you call me before I've done that. And now I'm being mean and nasty to you because I didn't set boundaries. That's now on me. So that's why discipline is so important. So when it comes to setting boundaries, we're talking about number one, uh, make sure that you are direct. Make sure that you are descriptive, which is which means being clear. Make sure you are disciplined. So that means you set the boundaries, you abide by the boundaries, you're consistent in um, upholding the boundaries, and then you also respect the boundaries of others. So, yes, you have to be consistent. Hey, Sherilyn, you ha and you have to be direct. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, because if you want to stop, if you want to be a doorbell and stop being a doormat, then you really need to uh, follow these these um, guidelines into setting boundaries for you. And so when you're direct, uh, stop offering explanation to people because you don't really owe them that because you are not responsible for their perception. You're re only responsible for your reality. Okay. Um, and being descriptive again. So being very clear, being specific about what your boundaries are so that they can uphold those boundaries. If they're confusing to them, to you, they're going to be confusing to them. Right. And so that's where the, the frustration will come in at, because you're going to be upset. You're going to be frustrated and they're going to be frustrated because you were not clear about what your boundaries were. And that's when relationships start to falter and start to have issues where there are not when there's not real clarity because you're worried about hurting someone's feeling or you're worried about, you know, the relationship uh, coming to an end because you're being honest. If people can't handle the reality of who you are, then you need to stop pretending that, um, pretending to be who they want you to be. Okay. Because as I said earlier, faulty friendships falter fast. Um, fabricated friendships falter fast. I'm sorry. So um, one of the, and the last thing that I'm going to cover is this, the difference between being available versus accessible. So um, one of the things that I stopped doing is lying to myself and lying to other people. So what do I mean by that? I stop telling people that I'm here for you whenever you need me. How many of you all have said that? How many of you all tell that story right now? Like, just be honest, no judgment. But how many of you all literally, when someone is going through something or when you're offering yourself, offering your services or offering to be there for someone, that you make the statement, I'm here for you whenever you need me. How many of you do that? I probably should have opened up with that question, but Nevertheless, I'm saying it now. Okay, so Dawn is willing to be honest. She said me. Okay. Who else? That you literally tell people that. Bianca. Okay, thank you for being honest, Bianca. All right, so I stopped doing that um, because the reality is I'm not there when you need me. Okay, hey, the Phoenix Oasis, she says to me, good. Thank y'all for being honest. I'm not there whenever you need me. I'm there for you when I'm available, when I am um, accessible, right? I believe that one of the things social media has done is, is that it literally has made people believe that because that green light is on or because it says I'm on line, that you, you can have access to me or because there is an inbox option that you can have access to me whenever you need it, right? And... The reality is you should never be accessible to everyone whenever they need you because you are supposed to pour from your overflow, from your saucer, not from your cup, right? 
Um, if you know anything about um, a saucer, you know, when you put the cup in a saucer, if that cup begins to overflow and it's like the first little sip of it is the best, right? It just, it just tastes the best. And you always want to catch that first little sip that's dripping over, right? That overflow. And the reason is because the overflow is the best part of you because you're now pouring out all of the goodness that is on the inside of you. But the moment that you start pouring from your cup, you are now depleting yourself. So that means you are operating on fumes. And if you know anything about fumes, fumes are toxic. So while you think that you're pouring into someone and you are being there for them, you are now poisoning them with the fumes because you're operating on fumes. You're operating on the most toxic part of yourself. You are literally now pouring out toxicity. And so that's why you should be available. Even though you're available does not mean that you should be accessible. You are only as good to other people as you are to yourself. Period. Okay. That's, you're only as good to others as you are to yourself. If you're not taking care of yourself, when you're beat down and you're run ragged, you literally are unable to give people the best of you. And we should give people the best of us, not the rest of us. So that's why it's important for you to say, look, I may be available, but I'm not accessible because I haven't been filled yet. I'm not filled to capacity, to capacity. I'm not where I need to be mentally. I'm not where I need to be emotionally. I'm not where I need to be spiritually. I may not be where I need to be financially. And because of that, that means that I cannot really give you what you need. Right. And the good thing is, um, because it, although you're not able to give them uh, everything they need. I tell people, listen, God never sleeps nor slumbers. So he can give you what you need at any time, any day, any second, any moment. He is there for you. But Shamika has to sleep. Shamika sometimes slumber. So Shamika is not there for you whenever you need her, but she is there for you when she is available. She is there for you. I'm sorry. She is there for you when she is accessible to you. When she has done what she needs to do to take care of herself, she can give you the very best that she has to offer. Okay. So you again, want to make sure that you understand the difference between being a, available and accessible, because when you make yourself available to anyone else, anytime you need them, then you are doing them as well as yourself a disservice. And you are not giving them the best of you. You are just giving them the rest of you. And when they get the rest of you, that is not benefiting them the way that it should. Okay. So any questions really quickly, because I'm sure you all have some questions. I know I went through this, uh, you know, a little bit quickly. Actually, it's been 22 minutes. So I've actually done very well uh, with this. But I want to make sure that you all are clear on what it takes to uh, set boundaries in your business. The reason I focused on setting boundaries um, personally, because like I said, if you have problems setting boundaries personally, then you will have problems setting boundaries professionally. They go hand in hand where you are and how you are in your private personal life is how you're going to show up in your professional life. So if you struggle with rejection in your personal life, you're going to struggle with it in your professional life. So you will have a hard time saying no. Okay. And you will continuously be a doormat versus a doorbell. Okay. So again, any questions, if you don't have any questions, just type no in the comment section. So that way I can close out and I won't just be sitting here looking like I'm looking and I'll know that I've given you everything that, uh, that you need it with clarity. And now you can walk away with a real strategy. Okay. On, uh, what it is you need to do to set boundaries in your business. And how are, how, who's attending, um, who is participating in the seven day live challenge? Let me know. I want to know how you are doing. How can you tell what hours are your best hours for contact with others? No one can determine that, but you, um, you have to take the, the power that you have and use the authority that you have and you determine that and other people abide by it based on how you enforce it. So I think I'm going to do something about um, productivity because 
Uh, well, no, I'll do that in another video. That's going to be something completely different. Okay, there are like 13 of y'all on here. So I don't know if y'all are not able to comment or what, but just let me know if you have any last minute questions. And if not, um, that's fine. But again, if you haven't shared, make sure you do share this video and invite others to join us. Two of the seven day live challenge. And uh, the challenge is being facilitated inside of the instant influence group on Facebook. Uh, if you have posted or if you've been going live, make sure that you are posting on the corresponding topics within the group so that I can go and give you some feedback on your live video. Each day we're going to work on a different part of the live video strategy and the challenge. So make sure that you are paying attention to that. If you're not following me on Instagram and Facebook, do that at Dr. Shamika Dean. You can also check out my website at shamikadean.com. And again, thank y'all so much for tuning in. I'm already loving this challenge and I'm going to keep going live. This is a challenge for me because I uh, just started building this channel right here. So I specifically wanted to work on going live on this channel because I've been, I built my other channel up to over 30,000 subscribers already. And I was using a live strategy. And so I wanted to come over here and start implementing a live strategy technique on this channel as well. So again, it's been amazing thus far and I can't wait until tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's topic. Let me see what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. Let me pull up my notes. Okay. I'm going to do tomorrow customers versus culprits. So how do you identify the right type of customers and then the customer, the culprits, the customers that you literally like, it is so not worth it. So I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. Customers versus culprits is what I'm going to be talking about uh, on the live challenge tomorrow. So uh, if you're not inside of the instant influence group, on Facebook. That's where we're doing the challenge. And thank y'all so much for tuning in tonight. And I will see you guys again tomorrow. I love you immensely and intensely. Bye-bye.